Magandang hapon mga kanyang press corps. Kasama natin ngayon si Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles. Magandang hapon. Uh, nagkaroon tayo ng cabinet meeting po kanina but of course, bago yan, mayroon po tayong bagong Executive Secretary, former Chief Justice Lucas Bersamin. Nag-umpisa na po siya kanina. Matapos niya mag-oath taking, umatend po siya ng ika Sham na cabinet meeting ng administrasyon na ito. Uh, nag-participate na po siya kanina at uh, today he puts in a full day's work immediately after taking his oath. Sa cabinet meeting naman po, ang aming na-discuss tungo dun sa economic transformation agenda ng ating Pangulo ay yung mga sumusunod. Uh, una, efforts to ensure compliance with standards of training, certification, and watchkeeping, STCW. Ito po ay diniscuss ng Marina, CHED, at Department of Migrant Workers. Uh, tungo pa dito, ang DOLE naman at TESDA at CHED ay nag-discuss ng pag-upgrade ng skills of the Filipino workforce. Uh, bahagi ito dun sa economic transformation program ng ating Pangulo, kasama po doon yung educational aspect at isa po ito dun sa aspeto na yon. So, both vocational skills training and expanding the skills of our workforce is part of the economic transformation of the President. Sa atin namang uh, carding response, uh, tuloy-tuloy pa rin po ang NDRRMC sa kanilang assessment sa epekto ng nakaraang bagyo. Ang as of this morning's counting, ang sabi ng NDRRMC, walo po ang reported dead, tatlo pa ang missing, 32 cities and municipalities have been declared have declared that they're under a state of calamity. Ang current count for affected population is at 60,817 persons with more than 46,000 persons staying in 976 evacuation centers across affected regions. Uh, although maano yung numbers na ito, sinasabi ng DSWD dahil na preposition po ang mga relief goods at pre-evacuated ang, ang mga naging potential, ang potential victims or victims dito, the damage is minimal in terms of the cost of human life and uh, uh, injuries. Nasasanay po ang mga tao dun sa pag evacuate dun sa mga early warnings at saka dun sa magkaroon ng maayos yung sistema sa pag evacuate at pag early warning sa ating mga potential victims in, in uh, disaster paths. Okay. Um, bukas na po tayo para sa mga katanungan. First question, Marisol Halili, TV5. <coughs> Hi ma'am, magandang umaga po. Ma'am, um, can you give us a background kailan po nakausap ni President Bongbong Marcos si uh, E.S. Bersamin and why did the President choose uh, E.S. Bersamin to be the, the new Executive Secretary? Well, uh, primarily it's a uh, trust basis. Sinasabi ng ating Pangulo, he is well qualified to be the Executive Secretary having put in so many years in the judiciary. He has the necessary legal background and the ability to deal with paperwork. Uh, plus, of course, he is trusted and well qualified for this. Pero, ma'am, paki-explain mm -hmm. lang po, what will be the difference when it comes dun sa mandate ng Executive Secretary and dun po sa office ngayon na Secretary Vic Rodriguez, sa Presidential uh, Chief of Staff, tama po ba? Opo. Na, Opo. Uh, well, in the absence, wala pa pong publication kasi ang ating AO1, so we'll have to wait for that uh, bago po natin magagawa ng distinction, if any. Okay. So we'll wait for the publication. Ma'am, sorry, last na lang. Yes, Does it mean na hindi pa po final yung appointment ni uh, Attorney Vic Rodriguez as Chief of Staff? Uh, ang current status quo is that he entered into his duties as Chief of Staff. So that is how things stand right now. Thank you, ma'am. Next question, Maris Umali, GMA News. Ma'am, just a follow-up on what Maricel asked a while ago when it comes to uh, when exactly did the President talk to uh, former Chief Justice or the present ES now? Uh, when was the offer made? Uh, was it prior to him going to the U.S.? Uh, wala po tayong information on that one. We know that, the, he, that he had talked to uh, former Chief Justice, now Executive Secretary Bersamin, before he entered into his duties. But as to the exact date, wala po tayong mm -hmm. information on that. Pero matagal na po niyang contemplate yon right after the resignation of the former ES. 
I have no information on that one as well. Um, I'm not sure even of the relevance of the question. Ma'am, so, how about the administrative order for the appointment of mm -hmm. uh, the former ES as mm -hmm. the now chief of uh, staff? We'll be waiting for the uh, administrative order. It has to be published, by, so we'll have to wait for that. Thank you, ma'am. Next question, Job Manahan, ABS-CBN News Online. May we remind everyone for a one question, one follow-up only. Thank you. Good afternoon, Secretary Trixie. Mm -hmm. um, is there any information about Russia possibly supplying fuel and fertilizer to the Philippines? Uh, President Marcos, in an interview po kasi, uh, while he was in the U.S., confirmed that he's having talks right now regarding that, and he is close na daw po in striking a deal. So until such time uh, that the agreement has been entered into and finalized, we cannot comment on it. So, wala pong information yung palace on that, ma'am? Kahit sneak peek lang po? We, we do have the information, but we, until the agreement has been finalized, then we cannot uh, disclose the pending transactions. Okay, but thank you po, ma'am. If any, yeah. Next question, Joyce Balancho, ABS-CBN. Good afternoon, ma'am. Napag-usapan po ba sa cabinet meeting yung weak peso value and ano pong plano ng economic managers about it? Uh, not today, although the president is in constant touch with the economic team and they are closely monitoring this. As you know naman that the inflation rate isn't due to any uh, local factors. It's really about the exchange rate. But uh, it is a matter for the president, which the president closely monitors on a regular basis and is in close contact with the economic managers on this matter. Follow up lang po, the International Monetary Fund expects slow growth in the Philippines to just 5% in 2023 from a forecast of 6.5% for 2022. Palace reaction lang po. I'm sorry, was there a question? Uh, a reaction to the statement of the IMF, they're expecting slow growth in the Philippines for next year. Well, we, we, will, we will have to see about that. The forecast, our economic managers forecast a higher growth. So they are in a much better position to make that determination and that forecast. Our fundamentals are strong. The economy is in a good resurgence and we are experiencing a, a good rate of growth right now. So we will have to see uh, in the end whether that forecast is going to to be more accurate than the local forecasts. Next question, Dennis Hamito, Bomba Radio. Okay, ma'am, good afternoon. Uh, nagkaroon po ba o magkakaroon ng uh, Legislative Executive Advisory Council meeting uh, after nung uh, pag-certify as urgent dito sa 2023 national budget? Uh, may schedule po ba? Uh, wala pa pong ipinahahayag na schedule sa ngayon. Wala pa, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, ano pong nagbunsod? Bakit uh, isinertify as urgent uh, yung national budget ng 2023? Uh, dahil priority naman talaga ng uh, both houses of Congress yung budget taon-taon, ma'am. It's really just to underscore the need to pass the budget para hindi magkaroon ng reenacted budget. It's the same reason. Last question. Um, <laughs> yeah, Maricel Halili, okay. TV5. I'm sorry, other issues lang po. Kasi yung pong grupong hukom at saka po yung Philippine Judges Association, mm -hmm. um, they actually called on the administration leadership to declare that in no time under its watch, will democracy be imperiled by an irresponsible and unfounded assault on a trial Judge, actually, sinabi po nila ito following the statement of former Yusek Lorraine Badoy uh, against po dun kay Justice uh, Judge Malagar, yung decision about the terrorism of CPP and PA. Ano po yung response ng administration sa panawagan po ng grupong hukom? As you know, this administration will adhere closely to the rule of law and only to the rule of law. Uh, we do not endorse any illegal activities. Um, and we have relied on the statement of the Secretary of Justice saying that uh, this particular case can be refiled uh, or is to be refiled under the Anti-Terrorism Act. 
So there is no need for a reaction regarding, you know, on the part of the administration, as strictly on the part of the administration, there is no need to react about the decision since there is a different regime now, a different legal regime, which is the Anti-Terrorism Act. So we let the law take its course and allow the ju judiciary to exercise its full mandate. The SOJ will be directing anyway the filing of a proscription case in the Court of Appeals as prescribed by the Anti-Terrorism Act. Welcome. Maraming salamat, Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles. Maraming salamat, Malacanang Press Corps. Magandang hapon.